Welcome to Gadagamix. This time we will review the MS Fit Bip 5. Let me tell you upfront, this smartwatch is suitable for those looking for a smartwatch that can make Bluetooth calls, has a unique design, can be used to play mini games, and already has built-in GPS with good accuracy to accompany sport activities. And its price is relatively affordable when you consider its features. First, let's do the unboxing. Some highlighted features. The MS Fit Bip 5, magnetic charging cable, instruction paper. To turn it on, you can either press and hold the button on the side or connect the charger. Multiple language options. To pair or connect it to your phone, you need to install the SEP application on your phone. After that, simply scan the QR code display on the watch and follow the next steps. In this video, I will start with the highlighted features first and then I will discuss its limitation later. Because if I start with the design first, you might have already seen it in other MSFIT BIP5 videos. First, the MSFIT BIP5 uses 4 GPS navigation systems. Not only that, but in my opinion, its navigation algorithm is better compared to the previous MSFIT series. As a result, the recording of my workout routes during testing several times produce accurate results. These routes were recorded when MSFIT B5 was not connected to the phone, meaning the data was purely from the MSFIT B5 itself. You can see that even when passing through tall trees, the workout route can still be recorded accurately. And when I enter a densely populated residential area with narrow streets, you can see that even when I made a U-turn upon encountering a dead-end street, the turns were recorded accurately. For those who enjoy cycling, the MSFIT B5 can be used to display speed, so you don't need to buy a cycling computer anymore. In short, the MSFIT B5 is suitable for those who enjoy sports without carrying a smartphone since it can record workout routes independently. Its sports features are quite comprehensive. You can set goals based on the workout effect by using data such as distance, durations, or calories. You can also set reminders if your heart rate goes beyond a safe limit based on distance, pace, cadence, time, calories, or even to remind you when it's time to drink water, have an energy snack, or when it's time to return. Auto lap feature. Auto pause or the recording of workout data will stop automatically when you are still or when your pace falls below the specific threshold. There's a virtual pacer and cadence assistant as well. We can also customize its display to show the most important data for us, so it's very flexible. It also has intervals training features for various types of sports like running, cycling, jump rope, and strength training. You just need to set the workout intervals along with the rest periods and choose how many sets you want. Here's an example of time-based interval training. The display looks intuitive. There's a green indicator that shows the remaining time or progress. And this is the display during the rest time. It's in blue. I set the intervals to be short just as an example. This is a virtual pacer. The red represents us and the blue represents the AI assistant. If we stop moving, the red icon will also stop. And this is the cadence assistant display. Cadence refers to the number of steps per minute. The tuk, tuk, tuk sound is an indicator for cadence to help maintain the training rhythm or tempo. It can be adjusted to be faster or slower depending on the settings in the cadence assistant beforehand. The indicators can be in the form of sound, vibrations, or both. The accuracy of steps on the MS Fit B5 is good. Out of 1000 manually counted steps, the MS Fit B5 show 992 steps, so the accuracy is still above 99%. I compare its heart rate accuracy with a heart rate belt. For maximum heart rate, there is indeed a difference of 2 heartbeats, but this is still within a reasonable range. The average heart rate is the same, which is 113 BPM. The grab curve is also the same. You can see here that my heart rate briefly dropped for some reason and it was detected well by both the MS Fit B5 and the heart rate belt. In conclusion, the heart rate sensor on the MS Fit B5 works well and it's accurate in detecting heartbeats. For strength training exercises, it can detect the number of hand movements but not the types of movements. There might be one or two counting variances, typically when transitioning between exercises or when placing or picking up weights. After completing one set, you can swipe right and select the rest interval. You can also set interval workouts for strength training. For jump rope exercises, it will count the number of jumps. 
You can view some of the recent workout records directly on the watch or access them in the SAP app after synchronization. The workout result can be synchronized with Strava and several other sports apps as seen. There's also an auto workout detection feature that will automatically suggest starting a workout mode if it detects certain movements. In addition to the already mentioned types of sports, there are 120 other sports modes to choose from. Some of them use GPS, typically for outdoor activities, but many sports modes simply record time, heart rate, and calories. You won't find a swimming sports mode because this watch has an IP68 rating, which means it's not suitable for swimming underwater or exposure to high pressure water. However, it is safe to use it even in heavy rain, there won't be any issue. Also, a brief immersion should be fine. Just make sure the water exits from the speaker hole. I don't see this as a drawback, but rather as consequence of having a speaker. On the other hand, having a speaker allows for notifications, workout information, or alarms to have audible sound. The presence of a speaker that can provide workout status information gives the impression that the MSFIT Beat 5 is like a premium smartwatch. And this is also great for people who might be allergic to vibrations. They can turn it off and rely on sound notifications instead. The sound volume at the maximum level is quite loud but slightly distorted. So I usually set the volume at around 75% which is easy to do because it's available in the quick settings. For notifications, you can choose sound, vibration, or both. As for the strength of the vibration, it's strong. And if needed, we can customize the vibration through the SAP app to distinguish between incoming calls, notifications, alarms, or others. Notifications can display up to 970 characters, including spaces, and due to its large screen, they are quite easy to read. It's suitable for those who have difficulty reading small text. There's a quick reply feature for WhatsApp message. You can respond with emojis or reply with text that you've prepared in advance. Moving on to the next feature, which is Bluetooth call. The connection is good and stable. You can save several contacts directly on the watch by synchronizing them through the SAP application. Here is the quality of the microphone and speaker. Test one, two, three, test one, two, three. This is the sound of a message this type speaker. Test one, two, three, test one, two, three. This is the mic quality of a message this type. For WhatsApp call, I cannot use it on my Infinix phone, even though all permissions have been enabled. But on Samsung phones, it is said that WhatsApp call is supported, so it seems to vary depending on the device. Another advantage is that we can add more features or mini games through the SAP app. I counted more than 80, which means we can get over 80 additional features if we want to. Although some of them still have bugs, such as the distorted icon of the Navigation Wear app, but it can still be used and usually there will be bug fixes in the future. Navigation Wear itself functions to relay Google Maps directions from the phone to the watch, so it uses the phone's GPS, not the watch. But for other applications or minigames, the majority of them run well and are enjoyable to pass the time. In terms of productivity, I really like the synchronization feature with Google Calendar. We can see our schedule and receive notifications when the time comes. Now let's talk about the design. In my opinion, the MSFIT Bip 5 has the best design compared to the previous Bip series. Of course, this is based on my personal taste, which may differ from others. It has a width of 38mm and a lock-to-lock -lock length of 36mm. With the sensor, it has a thickness of 12.7mm. Without the sensors, it's only 11mm, which is quite slim, although the design doesn't make it look thin. On the right side, there is one button and a microphone hole. Mine is the soft black color, although it clearly looks gray. Other color options include pastel pink and cream white. On the left side, there is a speaker hole. The strap uses quick release pins and has a width of 22mm, making it easy to find replacements. The strap has an inward fitting style which looks neat but can be a bit cumbersome to put on. The strap itself feels soft and comfortable to wear. It weighs 40 grams so it's considered lightweight. Here is how it looks when I wear it. The size falls into medium to slightly large category. This is because the MSFIT BIP 5 has the largest screen compared to previous BIP models. The screen itself measures 1.91 inches. When I first turned it on, I thought it was an AMOLED screen, but it turns out it's not. So you won't find the always on display feature. However, it does have a keep screen on feature that keeps the screen on for up to 20 minutes and can be repeated. The normal duration for the screen to stay on is between 5 to 30 seconds. The screen quality is good and the black parts are quite dark. So if you use a watch face with a dark background, it looks more bezel-less. Moreover, it has no frame so it gives the impression that the front part is all screen. 
The screen color is vivid enough, although not as vibrant as AMOLED. It is still visible outdoors when set to maximum brightness. There is no auto brightness feature yet. The touchscreen response is smooth and nice, and what I like is that the screen is curved, making it feel more natural for swiping. One unique feature is portrait watch face, allowing us to set the time as if it's behind a photo. The result looks more integrated, which is cool in my opinion. It is one of the wonders of AI technology these days that it can automatically detect the human part. You can use three different photos for this feature. You can switch between photos by tapping the screen or using the raise to wake functions. Recording other watch face options, at the time of making this video, there were 70 watch faces available that you can choose and install through the SAP app. Swiping down takes you to the quick settings. Swiping up brings up notifications, neatly grouped for easy viewing. Swiping left takes you to widgets that you can customize to display what you prefer. The widgets or custom cards are helpful for my needs. Swiping right or left is the same in the sense that it will cycle through them. What I like about Omas VP5 is the flexibility in arranging widgets, quick settings, and features. So we can customize the appearance of this smartwatch to suit the different needs and habits of each individual. We can also configure the right button to activate specific features when click and help. In short, in terms of user experience, I like it, and I don't have any complaints. As for its battery life, it's claimed to last up to 10 days with normal usage, and I've tested it and it indeed lasts for 10 days, but this does depend on usage as well. Charging from 26% takes about 1 hour and 15 minutes. Here are some other features and my conclusion. Overall, my assessment of the BIP5 is positive. The fitness tracking feature work well, and other health features like all-day heart rate monitoring, blood oxygen, and stress level monitoring also works well. We can set reminders for abnormal data, and I personally like the design of the MS Fit B5. It's not too mainstream and looks quite premium. If you tell someone its price is more than 100 US dollar, people would still believe it. It's suitable for everyday casual use, and it can still be used on slightly formal occasions, but it ultimately depends on individual preference. If you rarely or never use the always on display feature, then the MS Fit Bip 5 can be an option as a reliable fitness tracker because it uses a better algorithm compared to the previous MS Fit series. Moreover, if you need the Bluetooth call feature, it's rare to find an MS Fit series in this price range with Bluetooth call capability. However, it all comes down to your specific needs. According to your preference, what features are most important or desired, and then adjust it to your budget. Thank you for visiting the Gadogamex channel. I hope this video is helpful to someone and see you in the next video. God bless you.